A long time ago, Magnus Carlsen played Blitz Chess with members of Chess.com. However, there is one game in particular that the world champion will never want to remember again. Luis Paolo Supi and Magnus Carlsen. Time control, 3 plus 0. E4, D5, Scandinavian defense. E takes D5, Queen takes D5. As you know, the main move here is Knight B3. In the game, the Brazilian Grand Master's choice was Knight F3 move. Whites can control a large area with their C4 to B4 advances and pawns in the future. Against the Knight F3 move, Carlsen continues the game with Bishop G4. While the Blacks aimed for fast development, they have also taken the queen's bishop from the chain in case he played the e6 move. Now bishop e2, knight c6, and knight c3. Supi is now playing the c3 tempo he postponed at the beginning. Queen d7 and h3. Here, of course, the response could be bishop h5 and bishop f5. Carlsen, on the other hand, does not want to waste time and is willing to make the bishop f3 move. Now bishop takes f3 and queenside castling. Magnus Carlsen has been developing the queenside since the beginning of the game. Therefore, his queenside castling move is a very natural response. Supi continued to develop his kingside castling while the world champion now chooses for the knight d4 move. Of course, in terms of principles, this is a little inconvenient because the blacks haven't finished developing yet and it's the second time he used the piece he used in the opener. But the world champion has very good reasons. Because he gave his opponent the bishop pair at the start of the game, and he particularly wants to take the bishop in f3. Well, let's see. When the Brazilian grandmaster saw his opponent make a queenside castling against the knight d4 move, he immediately went on the attack and continued with the a4 move. After a4, Carlson prefers to play king b8 as a prophylactic move, while Supi plays knight b5. That was one of the goals of the a4 move, of course. It's a pawn sacrifice, but Carlsen refused to take the pawn sacrifice here, and he's right. Because chasing pawns can be too dangerous when the blacks are so far behind in development. For example, following the exchanges from b5, vertical a has been opened, allowing the whites to develop quickly comfortably, and effectively. They also have very serious threats. That's why Carlsen refused to accept this pawn sacrifice. Knight takes f3 against knight b5, and queen takes f3. As a result, he took his opponent's bishop pair. Particularly this extremely powerful, unrivaled bishop. But of course, the blacks still have significant problems in development. When we look at the position now, the white knight in b5 appears to be very irritating. It's like a knight infiltrating the opposing field. As a result, Carlsen is right to use the a6 move to push this knight away. However, as a young grandmaster, the Brazilian player must have a very aggressive style of play and it is here that he sacrifices his knight bravely with c4. According to Stockfish, taking the knight is extremely beneficial to the blacks, but it's not easy to do that, especially at a blitz chess. For example, we can take a brief look. A takes b5, and A takes b5. Of course, the main idea of whites was to open vertical A, and seeing the problem with their opponent's development, 
it is predicted that the whites will be able to easily sacrifice this piece. Now, one of the most important threats is queen a3. He might want to checkmate his opponent. According to Stockfish, everything is under control, queen d3. The attacking side, of course, will not want to exchange the queen, especially if they have made a sacrifice. Alternatively, the whites could play queen d1 to move their queen to the a vertical instead of taking the f7 pawn. Now, once again, queen a4, it's a serious threat. With the queen takes c4 move, this queen appears to be able to defend by herself. That's how Stockfish sees it. But the blacks appear to be on a tightrope and can be checkmated with the slightest carelessness. That's why Magnus Carlsen rightly refused to accept this knight sacrifice. At least, not at this point. And he played e5 against c4. He should continue to develop. He also protected his pawn. Now, here's Carlsen's plan. He believes he's also blocked his opponent's queen a3 move. So he says, perhaps I should take the knight. Let's see. With a very good and extremely strong move, Supi manages to find d4. Here, Magnus Carlsen said, this was a brilliant move. As in the sample variant we just saw, the white's goal now is to prevent the queen's d3 defense ideas while simultaneously seeking to develop the queen's bishop quickly. Carlson's e takes d4 move here makes the white's job easier. Because the bishop is now actively participating in the attack from the f4 square. At this point, we can see that while whites are coming towards the end of their development, blacks still have a long way to go. Protecting the c7 pawn has become a problem in and of itself. Before we get to Magnus Carlsen's move here, of course, we can think of bishop d6, or perhaps the most tough rook c8 reverse move that wasn't easy to execute. But Carlsen didn't prefer these moves and instead played A takes B5, which resulted in him losing the game. After A takes B5, the whites were able to open the A vertical they desired. And now Carlsen wants to complete his development with the bishop G6, but the whites' rook A2 move is very strong. Of course, we can understand easily what the whites are trying to do. Double the rooks at A vertical and mate your opponent. Magnus Carlsen noticed this and played queen F5 right away. He is attempting to create an escape route for his king while attacking the bishop. But the rook F A1 against queen F5 now there is a mate threat in one move. And here Carlsen played king c8, and this is interesting. Carlsen is currently streaming live and looking at the chat. He made the following comment while not looking at the screen. He said, if my opponent plays rook a1, I could create an escape for my king from d7. But Supi made an incredible move to which Magnus Carlsen reacted with a quote, wow. Queen, c6 move, a perfect queen sacrifice. And here Magnus Carlsen left the game after some thought. Because now that the white's desire is to checkmate, the king can't escape. If this queen sacrifice is accepted, b takes c6, and after b takes c6, the pawn that reaches at square c6 this time will perform the same task. The whites arrive with a checkmate request once more. 
and the blacks have no defense in this situation, so it's quite interesting that the whites are both queen and knight behind, but his opponent still has a chance to mate. Consider the following scenario. Can't we use the b1 diversion move to block the mate? However, after rook takes b1 move, there is a mate threat once more. You play rook a1 move again when the king moves to b8, but there is a mate threat once again. It's a fantastic position. Carlson left the game against queen c6. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please like, leave a comment, and subscribe to this channel, and click on the bell icon to stay updated with my new videos. Hope to see you in the next videos. Take care.